Hello and welcome to all the attendees to today's session, Women in Cybersecurity, Why Now is the Best Time, by Speaker Roxane Kemp, Dean and Chief Academic Leader for EC Council University. I am Seema Singh and I will be your host for the day. Do let me know if you can hear me well. Please note, the session will be in listen-only mode and will last for 40 minutes, out of which the last, 20, the last 10 minutes will be dedicated to Q&A, requesting all the participants to post your questions in the Q&A window. Should you need any assistance during the session, please use the chat box. Also, if you are facing any audio-video challenges, please check your internet connections or you may log out and log in again. An important announcement for the certificate of attendance. The participants need to attend the complete webinar, including the Q&A session, to qualify for the certificate of attendance. The participant should fill in the survey form in the attendees thank you mail and answer the three questions based on the webinar provided by the speaker with the right answer within the same day. If you meet these two criteria, then you are eligible to receive the certificate of attendance which will be sent to your registered email ID within five to seven working days after the event. Now about our speaker. Roxin Kemp has over 20 years of experience leading and training effective teams. She is a US Army veteran and a sought after speaker and educator dedicated to providing higher learning and empowerment to those that need it the most. Roxin coaches individuals and teams to maximize their potential and works with organizations to improve their quality, capturing the audience while sharing her journey from growing up on a small farm in Texas to joining the army and embarking on a career in education. She has completed graduate and doctoral studies in business, educational, leadership, psychology and technology equipping her with a wealth of knowledge and experience to positively influence the lives of others. Roxane currently serves as the Dean and Chief Academic Leader for EC Council University, New Mexico, and as a cybersecurity professor and subject matter expert for several universities. So without any further delay, I would now hand over the session to you, Roxane. Thank you, Seema, for the kind introductions. Greetings and, and good morning. It is my pleasure to be talking with you today. My topic is Women in Cybersecurity, Why Now is the Best Time. And our agenda here, let me get our agenda up. Our agenda here is gonna cover some of the key topics that we hope to um, cover today. So whether or not you're planning on starting a career in cybersecurity or you are, um, already in cybersecurity, hopefully will motivate you to, to stay the course. So just a little bit more about my, myself before I jump into the presentation. Again, like Seema said, I've been involved in the technology industry in some form or fashion for over 25 years. At the age of 18, I joined the U.S. Army where I trained as a 31 Romeo, multi-channel transmission systems operator. And in short, uh, this is a communication specialist. And here in this role, I learned how to manage telecommunication systems and networks. And I can remember being out in a field exercise one night out in the woods in Fort Hood, Texas. And it was a very late night and I was manning my vehicle, watching radios and making sure that the communications was up. We were basically simulating what we would be doing in a real wartime environment. Um, I began telling another soldier, this has to be one of the easiest jobs in the military. And he replied to me, um, maybe so, but possibly one of the most dangerous jobs. And my response was like, why? Because mind you, at the time I was just 18 years old. I grew up in a country town. I had never put much thought into being in danger. So the other soldier explained to me, he said, the first thing is that when you work in communications, the enemy is going to try and knock out communications so that you can't communicate. So we're sitting ducks. And I, I thought about this, oh my gosh, I'm sitting ducks. Um, this is probably where I gained my, my first bit of real world awareness that there are those that simply exist just to find ways to disrupt, attack, and to harm individuals, organizations, and companies, you name it. So over the past years, I, I found myself after this working in IT companies, Hewlett Packard, Dell, Microsoft, and I eventually went back 
to school and studied higher education, became a higher education administrator. Um, I also became the point person for creating cybersecurity programs and ensuring quality and online programs. And I can, I can promise you that along the way, I haven't seen as many women entering the profession of cybersecurity and technology as I have seen males. And I think that we're at a crucial time right now where women need the encouragement and mentors in the field because there is definitely, this is definitely a great time to work in the field that has so much potential. And in 2020, we were, we were devastated by COVID. We had companies close. Many of us lost our jobs. Some of us, some of us even stayed home to take care of school-aged children. And in the meantime, while we were surviving, and trying to re restructure our lives due to this, this COVID um, epidemic, pandemic, the cyber criminals were out there and they were working overtime. So we were trying to put our lives together and they were working overtime. Um, in fact, the FBI reported that cyber crime increased by at least 400% since the onset of the COVID-19. So some of the things that, that the researchers report that, that change in the cyber landscape is that some cyber criminals, um, well, I'm sorry, cyber criminals as a whole shifted their focus from just going after our little bank accounts and trying to attack individuals. More of the, the cyber crime is happening with small businesses to major corporations. So now we've got businesses being hit, major corporations being hit, countries, governments, critical infrastructures, um, our IT leaders and our cybersecurity experts now had to take a look at the security budgets because they found that they weren't spending enough, that more needed to be done to protect our infrastructures. Also, um, and this also led to an increase in the cybercrime, a lot of our workers went remote. So because these re re remote workers are now at home, they don't have the security that some of the companies and some of the organizations have. So now we were faced with less secure networks that also led to an increase in, in cyber instances because we were more vulnerable. Uh, there, again, there was also more focus on security policies and enforcing the security policies. You also now had, again, to, to think about these remote workers and policies that needed to be put in place to make sure that the companies were not infiltrated by some of the things that were happening outside and externally. And so the probably the most baffling thing with the pandemic is, is some of the new cybersecurity threats. Um, some of these new threats that we've been faced with have also required us to develop new tactics. I, I never would have thought, I remember the day I was reading an article and found that um, cybersecurity um, uh, criminals had started attacking the pandemic, the COVID vaccines, actually attacking the organizations that are trying to heal our nation to try to contaminate the vaccine. So I, I can imagine that um, the founders of cybersecurity, the Jaba VCs, the people that that were, were out there thinking forward years ago about how we can protect ourselves, never would have thought we would have faced a pandemic and even had individuals that were so ruthless that they would go after the cures and the vaccines that would help us get back on track. But it was happening. So now we're looking at um, trying to protect protect our, our, our medicines, our hospitals, even our cars. So those, all of these things have impacted the cybersecurity landscape and caused the increase in um, crimes. So the next thing I wanted to talk about, if you've been you know, keeping up on this, obviously you have some interest in cybersecurity because you're here with me this morning, this morning for some, this evening for others. Um, there are a lot of jobs that are, that are in demand. Um, when I became a cybersecurity uh, point person in a university and started rolling out programs and trying to recruit students into these programs, one of the things that I like to share with them is that these cybersecurity jobs are in demand. I mean, this, this little graphic that I'm showing you on my screen right now is, is from an organization called CyberSeek that I go to look at various pathways and it just basically tells you entry level, what's out there, what the demand is, what type of jobs there are. You see that the cybersecurity specialist um, is, is can the median income is about $92,000 a year. Most of us can survive 
on $92,000 a year. Um, at the mid-level, you see the cybersecurity analyst, and you can also see that there are cybersecurity managers. One of the things, too, that's not on the slide that I'd like to point out is that for those of you that, that, that have this visual, because when I first thought cybersecurity, you think someone's sitting behind a computer, they're hacking, they're programming. There are many jobs in the cybersecurity industry. So um, we, we will uh, talk about where to find some of these, these jobs, but there are some that are not so technical. You have other roles in cybersecurity industry that don't require you to become a programmer. I um, also wanted to, to talk with you guys about um, diversity in cybersecurity. When we think diversity, when I think diversity, I always see those images where you see all these people that, that come from all these various nations, women, men, children. But re really, in cybersecurity, you, you really don't see enough of the diversity. In fact, um, as I research various um, demographics and, and reports on the statistics in cybersecurity, overwhelmingly, you find that the white male is dominates the cybersecurity industry. We roughly have about 24% women in the industry and 26% ethnic minorities. So think about it. Think about how many of you are women and ethnic minorities and the interplay between the two. So we're not really represented very well. You know, I'm, a, I'm an ethnic minority and I'm a female and I fall into both categories. So what's happening? You know, why is there no, there, there not enough diversity in cybersecurity? Um, there are theories out there that, that women are encouraged or are told that, you know, they're not good in those type of professions or that this profession has been stigmatized, that this is a male role. But um, we're hoping to change that. We're hoping to see more women join the um, cybersecurity industry. There's even some, some statistics out there that, that talk about how well females do once they get in and how they pair up with, with males. And a, a lot of them are, are making, making great waves. Um, anytime I'm going to try and um, do anything at all, if, if it's something that I think is, is major, I go out and I try to look for uh, someone that's done it already. So you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. There are women out there that are actually just making waves in cybersecurity. I've got three of them here listed. I don't know either of them personally. I wish I did. Um, but we've got Deidre Diamond, Dr. Jane LeClaire, and we also have um, Dr. Um, Dr. Jameson here. So you can see here that, Dr. Johnson, I'm sorry, Dr. Johnson, you can see here that there are many uh, women that are, that are leading in cybersecurity. And maybe one day one of our names will be up there, but when you Google top leaders and women leaders in cybersecurity, these are the top three that I see consistently. Um, and I, I, I was very interested when I saw that we had a, a CISO at, at, at um, Xerox and that we had a founder of Cybris and, and you know, these, these women are doing some great things. So read about them if you're just looking for additional motivation or encouragement to get out there and get into the industry. So uh, let's talk about why choose cybersecurity as a profession. So for the obvious reason, 0% unemployment rate, and I know many of you are thinking, how could it possibly be a 0% unemployment rate? Well, how they came up with this rate is that there is um, so many jobs, there, there's not enough uh, people with the credentials to assume these roles. So when they do the calculations all, all throughout all the cybersecurity um, job boards and job reports, you'll find that there is a reported 0% unemployment rate. Does that mean that you're going to go out and you're promised to get a job immediately? No, it just means that those jobs are available. And if you're prepared and you have the qualifications, you are more than likely to get a job because the jobs are plentiful. Um, I've also found quite a few places where you can go and just look at heat maps where you can click on the heat map in your location to see how many uh, cybersecurity openings there are in that area and what the demand is. Um, also, as you'll know from the previous slide that I was showing you, the various entry-level, mid-level, 
in higher level jobs, you'll note that the pay was pretty good. So cybersecurity as a profession is one of the highest paid industries. I like to tell my students that are entering the industry, um, at AC Council University, we get a lot of um, mid-career individuals. I also get a lot of students that have already completed some type of training and they're already working in the field. So I love to tell my students that you don't even have to wait to graduate to start working in the field and reaping the benefits of some of the income that's out there. Some students are coming to us and they are already um, in leadership positions. So in addition to this being an industry that you could get into with your certifications and with your experience, it's, it's also high paying. So you could be furthering your career by getting more certifications, more education, and making some money along the way. The median pay for the uh, cybersecurity um, analyst was $92,600 per year. And this was compared to the median um, annual wages for all workers at $37,040. So this is a substantial increase. So this is definitely a great reason to get into the cybersecurity, get into cybersecurity as a profession. Unlimited growth uh, potential. As I mentioned earlier, when I was talking about there's a 400% increase, you know, quite a bit. There's, there's plenty of cybersecurity problems to solve. Um, personally, some of the things that I've had an opportunity, areas that I've had a, an opportunity to work in is the education portion of cybersecurity. So I've had an opportunity to consult for, with numerous schools, create curriculum for numerous cybersecurity programs, so um, I have found, you know, um, I have a spouse that's also in the cybersecurity field and his area is risk management. So there is so many different areas and avenues that you can tap into. Just basically think about what you like to do, what part of uh, the industry you're more interested in. And you'll, of course, um, find an opportunity. Um, and also cybersecurity gives you an opportunity to, to make a difference. So imagine being that person that stops or, or stops the crime and finds out that there is a threat and um, is able to implement continuous improvement in an organization or either help, it, help an organization um, get back up when, once they've been um, taken down by a cyber criminal. So there are, I could go on and on for days about the reasons to choose cybersecurity as a professional, but I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Also, um, I wanted to talk about um, ways that you can get started in the um, industry. Again, like I said earlier about how you can um, research the industry. In some of the ways that I go out, I would go out and research the industry and recommend, again, just doing a search, doing a search job boards for cybersecurity, um, reading about various, we've got tons of cybersecurity magazines, cybersecurity stories. When I create classes for students, a lot of times I'll go look at the just stories, case studies of what happened, how this particular hospital's uh, files were infiltrated. Um, I've talked to, I had one particular student recently that was very passionate about getting into the cybersecurity industry because she was finding that there were tons of vulnerability in the uh, COVID, COVID uh, tracking and COVID vaccine rollout and the data, the way the data was being handled. She didn't feel as though the data was secure and that the, the data could easily be tampered with. Um, sometimes you may find that there is a, a, a interplay between what you're already doing and cybersecurity. How does cybersecurity play into what you're already doing? Um, after you kind of found your niche, again, look at the job boards. After you found an area that you think you might want to go into, search the job boards and look at what openings are out there. You'll be surprised there are tons of openings. And look at the qualifications. Anytime you want to do something, you want to move up, you want to, you want to choose a new career, get a new degree, look at the requirements and that'll help you do some planning. Um, decide on what kind of training you need. You, you may already have a college degree. You may have certifications. Um, I've definitely seen quite a, quite a few students that came to me already had a master's degree and they were looking to now 
become a, a credible leader in cybersecurity and they were going forward to get a master's degree in in cybersecurity. So decide on if it's a one class certification you need, a certification exam, or if you really want to get a bachelor's degree or a graduate degree in cybersecurity, decide on what you need based on what you find out on the job boards and the job searches. And then next, of course, I'm here uh, representing EC Council University as their dean. You can also contact my team, contact the EC Council team for help, and we will, we will definitely help you get started. And I want to talk about briefly some of the ways that we can help you get started in the cybersecurity industry. Um, some of the things that we're doing to support our, our women in cybersecurity, we have a president scholarship for women in cybersecurity. We also have um, a foundation fellowship, and these scholarships range anywhere from $2,000 up to $10,000. And, and, and this is just the beginning of some of the things that we do to support our future women cybersecurity um, professionals. We have mentors, um, we have actually um, faculty that are females that will mentor our students and mentor our graduates in the cybersecurity industry. One of our recent faculty members is a heavy hitter in the cybersecurity industry. And she also teaches our students and, and helps them find opportunities in the industry. Um, our EC Council Foundation Fellowship does a little bit more. We have a fellowship program right now that we are um, that we're offering, and we're looking for the outstanding academic um, achievers, the ones that the the women out there and, and males alike. But since we're talking about women today, I'm looking for the women out there that want to be a part of a fellowship that would like to learn more about cybersecurity, produce research. Um, just actually just make a contribution to this current cybersecurity landscape. Um, so in order to find out more about some of these opportunities, you could you could reach us at the email address on the PowerPoint and we'll definitely get you started in a career in cybersecurity. So at this time, I'm just going to open up. Um, I'm going to pass the Q&A back over and I'm going to give our our moderator a moment because I believe she's going to open it up for questions and answers. But um, hopefully I've, I've given you some some highlights today that will help you make a decision one way or another if you're interested in the cybersecurity profession. If you were here just to learn about how we've been impacted, hopefully there's some, some key takeaways on why now is a great time for potential women leaders in cybersecurity to take a stand and to show, show, their, show their talent. So thank you. Thank you so much, Roxanne. That was a very insightful and informative session. And uh, I hope all the attendees, uh, it was hope it was worth your time. So before we <clears throat> move on to the question and answer session, uh, if you are interested to learn more about our programs, uh, kindly take part in the poll that is going to be conducted now. So should we start with the Q&A, Roxane? I'm sorry, yes, yes. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Uh, now the first question is, uh, what are some non-technical roles? This is from Susan Brown. Some of the non-technical roles, again, um, I mentioned to you um, consulting, creating, um, Consulting is definitely one of the, some of the non-technical roles, depending on how you're consulting. I do a lot of the education consulting. That's non-technical to where you're not doing a lot of the programming. Um, if you're also a person that handles risk management, you may be one of those individuals that goes into an organization and just helps them set up policies and procedures so that they're not at risk and that's so that they're a little bit more prepared. So these are just a couple of examples of non-technical roles where you're not hacking, you're not programming. If, if, if hopefully that those two will get you started. Thank you, Roxin. Uh, the next question is from Ash Smith. He asks, does cybersecurity in the private sector include work with cell phone, work computer analysis? Yes, 
it, it's, it's it's all of that in the private sector um there's there's constant issues with cell phones i don't know how many of you have been hacked but i've i've been unfortunately hacked you you can have your cell phone hacked your computer's hacked so in the private sector and basically all sectors we see some of the the same kind of of threats the main goal of the the cyber culprit is to somehow stop you from doing what you're doing whether it be building a vaccine using your phone driving your car getting medical attention um, so there is an opportunity for you in pretty much any, any particular industry. There is a cyber threat waiting to happen. Okay, the next question is, is there details of the cyber industry in the Latin America Caribbean? I'm sorry, is there what again? Is there details of the cyber industry in the Latin America slash Caribbean? Uh, yes. Um, there's the there's quite a bit of research out there on basically just about every industry. If if I were to create a presentation for the Latin community, you would see some of the the same findings um, as in, in one of my previous slides where I was talking about, especially in in the women population, how there is a group of individuals that are minorities as a group of individuals that are women you will still find that the latin community the latin community falls within that minority group because there are not as many again the white male dominates the industry right now so there's still um, a lot that we have to do in these other communication com communities to get more diversity in cybersecurity. so as i was looking at the demographics i also saw that the Latin community was also not as represented as the majority. If that answers, hopefully that answers your question. Thank you, Roxanne. The next question is, will I and ML remove the cyber cybersecurity? Um, say that one more time, Seema. Will AI, artificial intelligence, and ML remove the cybersecurity? I don't believe so. Um, we're making quite a bit of advances in AI in machine learning. But what we have found, I mean, even, I mean, this this pandemic is, is evident that those that are looking to um, make these cyber threats and they find other ways. So I think that the more that we evolve, the more cybersecurity threats that we'll see. AI will, will help to correct and, and catch these things earlier, but then you'll also have those, those cyber guys that will be and those cyber organizations that are looking to um, infiltrate AI and machine learning. So as long as we're dealing with technology, I think that we'll always have cybersecurity. Again, there's this unlimited growth. There are things that we don't even know that we we don't even know to know about because we don't know. So if that makes sense, I don't think we're in jeopardy at any time of cybersecurity going away or the need to protect our infrastructures. Okay, the next question we have is, what are the opportunities we can get being a cybersecurity specialist? Um, cybersecurity specialists, again, plenty of opportunities. Um, a lot of organizations are looking for cybersecurity specialists, um, depending on your background, your, your education, and where you are in the world. Um, there are various cybersecurity industries and organizations that will help you get started. Again, like I mentioned earlier, if you're looking for a cybersecurity specialist role, I would take a look at the jobs that are out there. If you're looking to just go ahead and jump into the education market, um, in, into your education journey, check out eccu.edu and just look at some of our programs. And we can also help you get started and, and contact one of our counselors and we'll walk you through it and talk to you about the various programs. Um, EC Council University, we're very unique because in addition to getting you the ed education that you need, many of our courses are tied to a industry, industry um, coveted certification. I've worked with other universities and I can tell you we have a strong niche. A lot of students go to college, they get a bachelor's degree, they get a graduate degree in cybersecurity, computer science, whatever the technology field they get in, and then they get outside of school and they're like, okay, now I need to find a job, but the employer is saying, I need this certification and, and this ex experience. At EC Council University, you can go ahead and get the training that you need. You can also uh, get the certifications along with the training, 
And you can already be connected with leaders in the industry so that we can start getting you networked and getting you um, involved with organizations that are looking to hire our, our students. Thank you, Roxy. The next question is, how can women in Africa also benefit from cybersecurity awareness campaign? Um, even women in Africa can benefit from cybersecurity. Um, just yesterday, I awarded a fellowship scholarship to a young woman in South Africa. Um, again, one of the processes as the dean is, is, is I get a chance to read the letters and the stories. And you would be amazed at the young women in Africa that I've had an opportunity to meet and read about, you know, through their perseverance and how they've had to help manage their family. You know, some of them even stop schooling to take care of their family, only to go back later and try to carve out a niche for themselves. So there's plenty of opportunity in Africa. Um, most of our students are international students, and I found that they've had great success where they are currently. They're just looking to pursue, further pursue their education because they're trying to climb their corporate ladders and, and make sure that they're the leaders in the industries that they work in. Okay, uh, the next question we have is, how do we protect sensitive information handled and stored by third party vendors? You protect it by, there's a, there's a lot of different um, ways that you should make sure that you're protected. I would definitely advise you to reach out to us and we can get you on the path. We can even connect you um, with some individuals that can look at your particular, particular question and what you're trying to do. If you're looking at how to learn how to do this, again, connect with us and we'll get you in the right degree programs. Uh, thank you, Roxanne. Uh, the next question we have is, why despite the huge vacancy in the cybersecurity field, most of the posts remain vacant? Um, I can honestly tell you that Similar to what's happening with this with this pandemic, we 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 didn't plan for it. We didn't plan for the the huge need. Some of the things that have happened, technology is moving so fast that it's hard to keep up with it. It has been hard to keep up with it. We've got our cybersecurity industry that's just been trucking along, tackling the major priorities with the critical infrastructures, making sure that our countries are safe. And meanwhile, we have our techno te technology giants that are coming out with stuff every other week just last week my husband gave me a new cell phone he thought it was going to be fun he gave me an iphone 12. i've had to pretty much revamp everything just to look you know learn this this new smart device so with the increase in smart devices the increase in smart cars the increase in um all all these various um technologies there's more threats and because of these more these threats now we realize okay we don't have enough workers. Now we need to go find workers. Now, if we decide today we need workers, they may not be ready. And that's what's happening. The workers are not quite ready to assume these roles because they don't have the training. They may not have the education. They may not have the experience. They may not even know that the opportunity is there. So one of the things that we need to do is bring awareness to let you know that the opportunities are there and then help position you and get you ready to assume one of these roles. So the reason for the vacancies is that the vacancies are there because we we realize we need more workers. Thank you, Roxy. The next question we have is how to move to cybersecurity from a developer. I am a CEH also. Definitely great transition. Um, one of the things again is just is just get started. Um, there are many pathways that we can we can show you how they lead into other certifications and, and, and certain fields. So definitely reach out to one of our, our experts and we can get you started. If you are definitely looking to go from your current role into cybersecurity, the fact that you're already technical savvy and that you, you already understand technology will make you a great fit for the cybersecurity industry. Okay, the next question we have is, I am a programmer. How can a career in cybersecurity help me? Um, it, it just depends. It depends on what part of um, cybersecurity you go into. If you're looking to go into um, forensics and you're, and you're able to go into programs and look at 
threads and look at coding. I mean, there, it just depends on where you would like to go into. It can definitely advance you. If you're looking to advance your career and, and move into leadership, there's opportunities there. If you'd like to stay in programming and get more into um, creating more secure programs or being an analyst and looking at, at what's happening out there, there's plenty of opportunities. So if you're a computer programmer and you're looking to get into cybersecurity, you will learn how those two, those two uh, various roles, how those two roles can, can help each other. Thank you, Roxy. Uh, the next question is, uh, is a cyber architect and cybersecurity analyst job roles similar? So what was that first one again, um, Seema? Cyber, cyber architect and cyber analyst. Pretty similar. Um, depending on the organization and what their, their criteria is, they're pretty similar. You're, think about it, when you think about the word architect, you think about how they're creating and they're designing. Cyber analysts, more so you're, you're analyzing it. The architect, the architect actually has um, more of a holistic view of everything that's happening. So just depending on the type of cybersecurity architect you're looking to be, um, there, there's various roles that fall between. And, and the cybersecurity architect requires a little bit more training. So definitely reach out to us so we can help you get started and find those pathways. And I would definitely tell you to start by taking a look at both roles. On the slide that I showed you earlier, I had the, I'm, I'm pretty sure I had the cybersecurity architect as, as one of the um, higher level jobs. Look at the transition going from an analyst to the architect to figure out what type of skills that you'll need to pick up along the way, but definitely get started somewhere. Okay, the next question we have is COVID-19 has indeed a huge impact in our society. Did cyber community involved formulating this disease? One more time. Ask that question one more time. Do you want me to repeat it? Yes. Okay. COVID-19 has indeed huge impact in our society. Did cyber community involved formulating this disease? Did the, the cybersecurity formulate the disease? Is that what you're asking, Seema? Yeah. Did cyber community involved formulating this disease? Um, I would have to get back with you on that. I'll have to see that question and shoot me an email on that one and I'll do some research to kind of respond to that one a little bit better. I believe that you're asking me, was cyber, does cyber security have a part in formulating the disease? There is you know, quite a bit of rumors. CDC has put out some information there are those of us that think that this might be man-made, but you know, there's there's a lot of things that we want to say that's factual because we have the um, facts out there that we can substantiate. So let me email me on that, and we can we can probably talk on that offsite on some of our thoughts on, on that particular topic. But there is definitely the possibility that cybersecurity had a play in formulating the the, the disease. Sure. Uh, thank you, Cal. Thank you, Roxin. Uh, we will take one last question. Uh, the question is, uh, thank you for a wonderful presentation, Roxin. Uh, my question is, is building a career in cybersecurity a challenging task <clears throat> in the post-COVID era? First part of that question you said is being, what was that? Is building, uh, is building a career in cybersecurity a challenging task in the post-COVID era? I do not believe so. I believe that, again, um, one of the reasons for this, this presentation, first of all, you know, we were celebrating women and I was wanting to talk about why this is a good time for women. Well, one of the reasons it's a great time for women is that, again, the unlimited potential. Now there are more vacancies. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, there are a lot of people that are just don't feel safe to, to even go out and take a job. A lot of people are still at home, still on unemployment. Um, when I go and I just look at the job ads, there's so many openings. I'm, you're even starting to see the openings now where it's like no experience, just come with a degree. My spouse and I, we recently moved to New Mexico and we've transitioned here. 
and he's he's been in in this transition because we we want to stay in New Mexico, but he's constantly getting job offers to trying to pull us to DC and various parts of the world. So if you're open and you really want to be in the in industry, there's room for you. Um, I, I think that there's there's more acceptance, there's more awareness now than ever, especially with the impact of COVID-19 and the increase of cybersecurity, cyber crime. So uh, the answer would be no. I believe that the challenges are not as difficult as before. Even before the pandemic, the, the cybersecurity industry was pretty lucrative. But now, due to the increase and the supply and demand, you'll find that it's easier to get into these opportunities. And at EC Council University, we're even rolling out scholarships in various ways to make it even easier for you to get the um, industry credentials that you need to get you started. Thank you so much, Roxane, uh, for such an insightful and informative session. That was a really very interesting webinar. And Thank I you. hope and I hope you all the attendees have enjoyed this amazing presentation by Roxane and we hope it was worth your time. Uh, now, uh, Roxane, we have come to the end of this session. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you here with us. And uh, thank you to all the attendees who have joined the webinar and took part in the poll. And our concerned person will get, get in touch with you regarding your interests. Thank you so much. And all of you have a wonderful week. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you once again. With this, now we end the session. So you may not disconnect your lines. Stay safe. Take care, everyone.